Hello and welcome to the upgrading to Oracle Apex 4 on Oracle XE and Windows XP Professional video tutorial brought to you by MNS Consulting. On the screen is a list of assumptions and requirements for this tutorial as well as the location of a full in-depth article which covers more information than is presented here in this video. You will need about 800 megabytes of hard disk space for the base installation and upgrade of Apex 4. To begin, what we need to do is we need to open our file explorer and we need to create a directory that we're going to extract to. So I highlight the base of where I want to go. Go File, New, Folder. I'm going to call this Apex 4.0 and hit Enter. We're then going to go to where we downloaded the Apex software to. I'm going to right click on it and choose Extract Files. I'm using WinRAR on this machine. You can use WinZip, WinAce, or the built-in Windows file extractor. Then I want to point it at the Apex 4.0 directory and go ahead and tell it to extract. It will automatically create its own subdirectory, which it's supposed to, and go from there. We fast-forwarded through uh, time-consuming parts of this. When it's all done, we can then close the file explorer and we're ready to install this. So we're going to start by going start, run, typing in cmd, hitting enter. This brings us to a command box. We're then going to navigate to our working directory. In this case, it's apex40 slash apex. Now we're going to enter the SQL plus system. And we're going to connect as the sys user in the sysdba role and we'll feed it whatever the password is for our system. This system that we're installing to here is Oracle XE with Apex 3.2. Now what I'm going to do here is an optional step that is discussed in the full article. I'm going to be checking the HTTP port for the system. The primary purpose for this is that if you are in an environment where there are multiple external connections, when you go to run the install, you need to close down those connections so that you're not interrupted and causes problems. Let's discuss the exact procedures in the full article. Next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to install Apex 4.0. We're going to be installing it in a developer's environment mode. So we're going to type in the command, and then we're going to feed it its parameters, which are discussed more in depth in, on the website with the full article. And once we get that in, we're going to let it run here. Apex 4.0 has a significant number of improvements to its existing features, as well as new features and changes to the graphic interface. Its installation process is a little more involved than it was in Apex 3.2, so we recommend you go through the full article once or twice before you try this. And we're just going to let this scroll a little bit here. Actual time to actually run this part of the installation on this machine that this was recorded on was about 22 to 25 minutes. We've obviously skipped over quite a bit of that. Now it dumps us back out to the command prompt. And what we need to do is we're going to need to log back into SQL. Now the first thing that we may need to do is if we stopped any of these processes, we'll need to restart them, which you can do through the Start Programs menu. But the other thing is, is that if this were a new installation or a change from a development environment to a runtime environment, we would need to change the password. But since this is an upgrade, we don't need to. So we're going to re-log in to SQL Plus using the sys user in the sysdba role and now we're going to run the command that will uh, update our image directory. And I'm talking faster than I'm typing, I apologize for that. Oracle XE is also a slightly different uh, installation process than if you're installing to full 11G but we feed it the command here and then we feed it the base of our working path. In this case we're going to feed it C Apex 4.0 because that is the base of our full working path which is Apex 4.0 slash Apex. And when we're sure on this we're going to hit enter and this will 
run the image updater. Again, we'll shorten it here in the tutorial to save time. This actually took about six or seven minutes. And then once this is done, we are going to do what we did initially before we started this whole process, and that is we're going to verify the HTTP port that the system thinks it's using. This does two things. It tells us that one, it's been re-enabled, and two, what it's on in case there were any changes to it. If you need to re-enable it, the command to re-enable it, along with its syntax, is in the full article. and we're still on port 8080. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to check the settings of our job queue processes. The transactional support as well as certain aspects of the SQL scripts in Apex 4 do require uh, the job queue processes to be set properly. In this case it's set to 4. I don't I think that's a little low for this machine so I'm going to set it to 10. Um, exact guidelines as to how to reset it are available in the Oracle documentation. So we'll type in the command here. I goofed it up once, too many S's. So I'll type it in properly and go from there. Now what we need to do is we need to type in a command which will see if there are any uh, previous installations. In this case the Apex 3.2 user as well as the Flows 2.0-2.1 user. These are privileged users from previous installs. They need to be removed for security reasons, especially if they're no longer needed. The uh, exact code that operates that is in the full article. So we're going to drop these two users. And it's vitally important that you put the cascade on the end of the statement. Otherwise, you'll get an error. And it'll take a moment for it to actually execute the drop. Okay, we drop that user, and now we will type it in again to drop the other user. And once this is done, we are essentially done in the command prompt, so we can exit out by typing exit once, and then exit again and now we're going to go test to see that it was actually installed right. So we're going to go start all programs Oracle Database 10G Express Edition go to database homepage. Now the other thing that I did is that I left a user from a previous workspace in my previous Apex 3.2 install in there. This was partially a test to make sure that it brought it forward and it did. My workspace for that user was ms underscore test and my username was Kevin. So I'm going to punch in my password and hit login. This will tell me that not only did it do the upgrade, but it brought my other users forward. Here's the new interface. You can see there are a couple changes to it from 3.2. We go down and we see that yes, we are at Application Express 4.0. That concludes this tutorial for uh, upgrading to Application Express 4.0 on Oracle XE on Windows XP Pro. We hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you.